Heather O'Reilly now with space on the right side. O'Reilly towards the end line. Wombach is free at the back post. Wombach's hitter. With soccer being the most popular sport in the world, it is safe to say that it is a staple in our society. However, while most people know the basics of the game, not many would be able to explain what is occurring in our body during a simple fast break situation. A balanced combination of our skeletal, muscular, and nervous systems allow us to perform the simple actions of receiving, dribbling, and kicking the ball that are apparent in every game. To start off, my teammate kicks the ball towards me. In order to recognize that it is coming to me, I need to use multiple parts of my central nervous system, which include my brain and spinal cord. Now, of course, this system can be further broken down into many parts, including the brain, which controls the system and activities of the nervous system, as well as the cerebrum, which is the largest and most complex part of the brain. The cerebrum, furthermore, is divided into two hemispheres and four lobes, including the occipital lobe, which controls the sense of vision. The occipital lobe enables me to see the ball and then communicate with other parts of my central nervous system, such as the motor neurons and sensory neurons, to allow the nervous system to communicate with my skeletal and muscular systems to gain control of the ball. Once motor neurons communicate with my skeletal and muscular systems to physically control the ball, the many bones within my body work together to allow my foot to open and stop the ball in the instep of my foot. Some of these bones include my tibia and fibula in my lower leg and my tarsal and metatarsal bones in my foot. Along with my bones, the hinge joints in my ankle and my knee allow my leg to bend and move as I run and eventually move my leg in preparation for receiving the ball. In coordination with my skeletal system, my nervous system similarly interacts with my muscular system to tell my muscles what to do in order to properly receive the ball. Within my nervous system, the second largest part of the brain, the cerebellum, coordinates the movements of my skeletal muscles. After acquiring information from my sensory neurons, my cerebellum communicates with my muscles to not only maintain balance, but also to tell the muscles within my body to act a specific way. These muscles include my quadriceps and hamstrings in my upper leg, as well as my gastrocnemius and soleus in my lower leg. The tendons also connect bones to the, in my foot to the muscles in my leg, which allow my foot to move and moreover secure the pass from my teammate. One example of a tendon is the Achilles, which connects my soleus and gastrocnemius muscles to the calcaneus or heel bone. In addition to my legs, the nervous system also conveys signals to the abdominal muscles in my core as well as my gluteus maximus. Overall, with the leading direction of my nervous system, my muscular and skeletal systems are able to help me gain control of the ball as my teammate has passed it to me. However, as I move to dribble the ball up the field, all three systems play an increasingly more important role in my body as I make a move to goal. As I begin to dribble the ball up the field, my body utilizes once again the many bones and muscles to successfully maintain control of the ball. While I am running, my quadriceps and ham hamstrings in my thigh support the bending of my knee and the ball and socket joint in my hip. Many of the muscles in my legs are held together by ligaments and allow them to work together to make my leg extend and bend. Also, the hip flexors and extenders work with my quadriceps and hamstrings to move my leg forward and back. Along with my legs, the muscles in my upper body also help to maintain my balance. This overall balance in my body is overseen by the cerebellum in my brain. In addition to the cerebellum, the parietal lobe and the the cerebrum is also as involved in the position of my body as well as the sense of touch I gain as the ball hits my foot. Along with the central nervous system, the somatic nervous system relays messages to my motor neurons which sends impulses to the skeletal muscles which move my leg as I run up the field. These muscles along with the major bones in my legs are key factors while dribbling. My femur and patella in the upper leg work with the tibia and fibula in the lower leg to support my body throughout this process. The pelvic bones above my legs also support my upper body and are connected to my bone muscles through tendons, which allow my entire body to run. It is important to note that without all parts of my body working together, especially my bones, muscles, and brain, I would not be able to receive, dribble, and finally shoot the ball. Finally, I am nearing the goal and it is necessary for my nervous system to tell my body to go and kick the ball. 
Antennae-like extensions, called dendrites, received signals from my neurons and tell my brain that I need to kick my ball. From there, the cell body alerts my muscles and bones to react and prepare me to shoot. Similar to when I was dribbling, my nervous system tells my quadriceps and hamstrings to contract and loosen in order for my patella and knee joint to bend as a hinge. The tendons in my lower leg also change shape in order to allow my ankle to bend and my foot to flex. As my foot makes contact with the ball, the sensory receptors in the, my foot alert my brain of the touch and it acts accordingly. The weight-bearing part of my leg, the tibia, is what holds most of the power of my body weight while the many bones of the foot are would strike the ball. After the ball stinks into the net, neurotransmitters in my brain release a chemical called dopamine, which gives me the sensation of joy and excitement. However, what were to happen if mid-kick someone were to come from under me with a slide tackle and land on my leg improperly? If my tibia and fibula were the ones to have sustained most of the injury, it would be likely that the bones in my leg would experience a simple fracture, where the bones would split. This injury may result in surgery where the doctors would place steel rods in my leg to ensure proper healing. Some other, less serious problems that could affect my body are cold and fatigue. The temperature of my muscles affect how my muscles obtain oxygen and therefore contract. If they are cold, my muscles contract more slowly and therefore may feel more stiff and tight. This could be avoided through a proper warm-up before each game in appropriate attire. Similarly, Fatigue or tiredness in my muscles can have a negative effect on my performance. The fatigue weakens my muscles and would furthermore result in a poor performance during game time. In the end, with the help of all of my body systems, I am able to successfully receive, dribble, and shoot a ball into the net. Soccer is just one of many examples of how a seemingly simple activity can have such a complex system of reactions.